Samantha, can you talk to me for a little bit? Tessa, perfect timing. I'm just on my break. What's up? So I'm at your place right now, and we need to talk about, well, the chaos here. Wait, what? You're in our house? How on earth did you get in? Chill, the door was locked. I used the spare key you guys gave me, remember? Spare key? I don't recall giving you one. Remember when you jetted off on that getaway and needed someone to cats it? Your hubby handed it over then. Oh, vaguely. But didn't he ask for it back? Nope, we never talked about it again. Anyway, forget the key. Your fridge is what's bogging me. You're at work and there's nothing prepped for dinner. I make dinner fresh when I get home. Beats reheating stuff, don't you think? Sure, if you had the time. But you're clocking out at the same time as my son. Can you actually rustle up a decent meal that quick? Sometimes I prepare ahead, sometimes I don't. He's cool with it either way. Your freezer's empty too? What's the plan for tonight? Oh, my husband's on chef duty tonight. He's grabbing groceries after work. Both of you cooking? And you've roped my son into this too? Yeah, we're a team. We both have jobs, so we share the kitchen duties. Excuse me? Since when does my son play house chef? You know there are roles in a marriage, right? Look, we've talked it over. It was his idea to share the load, and honestly, his cooking's to die for. This is utterly irrelevant, Samantha. I gave my blessing to your union with my son under the impression that you would be his rock, his unwavering support system, ensuring his happiness was paramount. And now I stand here, feeling utterly deceived by your actions. But Tessa, it's about mutual support in this household. We've chosen to stand shoulder to shoulder, sharing life's burdens equally. And I abhor that very notion. Yet this is our home, not yours. Within these walls, we are free to live as we choose, without the need for your approval or oversight. That may be, but today you will assume the role of chef. It's your duty to prepare a meal for him. Could we perhaps discuss this with my husband first? After all, it was his initiative. In fact, why don't you address your concerns with him directly? Especially since you seem so perturbed by his involvement in the kitchen. Are you truly considering defying the wishes of your husband's mother? It's not defiance I'm advocating for. It is a recognition that the ancient notion of women's sole purpose being to serve men in the home is outdated. Outdated? Samantha, I have neither the time nor the patience to school you on the fundamentals of family dynamics. You will heed my instructions or you will face the consequences. Henceforth, I shall make it my daily duty to oversee your culinary efforts. You intend to come here every single day? Indeed, it has become a necessity. I must ensure that you're preparing the most nutritious meals for my son, to keep him robust and in good health. I refuse to allow you to serve him anything that's been frozen or is less than wholesome. If you wish to spare me the inconvenience of this daily supervision, then I suggest you start fulfilling the role of a wife as I envision it, and allow my son the comfort he deserves. Hey Samantha, do you not have any ice cream here? I haven't been buying ice cream for a little while now. Neither of us have been eating it lately, so there's no point in having it when it'll probably go to waste getting freezer burn. Then when you finish work today, make sure to buy some ice cream to bring home. And it can't be any of that cheap stuff, okay? I want it to be the most expensive stuff they have at the store so that I know it's good quality. And that I ask you to buy you two tubs of it. I want there to be enough for me as well. And my son deserves ice cream at all times because that's his favorite treat. Um, Tessa, does this mean that you're back inside our house again? I am, but what does that mean to you? My husband told you to give them that duplicate key back, didn't he? Have you still not given it to him? What's wrong with me holding on to it longer? I'm your mother-in-law, after all. And it was him that gave me this key in the first place back when you went on vacation. And that was because we were both gone for a while and needed someone to check up on the house and our cat. But right now, you keep coming to our house every single day. And you just coming in like that all the time is a bit embarrassing. I'm sorry, but you're really going to have to give that back to us and stop intruding on our lives, okay? And just tell me outright that I'm causing you troubles, okay? But look, Samantha, I'm not going to stop coming to your house whenever I want. Until you've proven to me that you can make meals for my son every day and good meals at that. I'm going to have to keep coming back to check up on you. And since you told me your concerns, I've been making food for him every day. 
I don't think I've eaten any of his cooking for a week now because of the changes you've asked for. I've even gotten all the things I need to make him some chili tonight for dinner. Ah, uh, well, about that. I threw all the ingredients in that away. What? Samantha, are you really going to force my son to eat something as disgusting as chili? I took a sip of the soup you had already made for it, and it was gross. So gross, actually, that I had to get into your wine cabinet and take a swig from something in there. Um, is that right? I've been making it since yesterday, and when I tasted it, the flavor was perfectly fine. And now you've gone into the wine cabinet? Tessa, I'm not sure which bottle you took a drink out of, but those are not cheap. And I had to drink that wine only because you don't know a thing about cooking. I don't even like wine that much, so I had to spit a lot of it out after. Your flavor palette is worse than that of a baby's. Ugh, I wonder if all of this is because of how you were raised. You were only raised by your father, so you never learned the correct way to cook and how to know if it's good tasting or not. My dad always made me some of the best dishes in that house. And because of that, I have been able to learn a lot about cooking and how to do it right. I even took some classes in college for culinary arts so that I could be on par with my dad's cooking. Haha, <laughs> you think that having learned about cooking from him will have made your palate any better? I think that your dad was just bad at cooking and so your palate was skewed. Why are you saying things like that? What help does that do in our current situation? I'm sorry, but I'm not cooking food for you in my house, am I? So stop complaining about it all and just go home. None of this is affecting you in any way. So stay out of our business, please. Well, I'm telling you right now that I'm here to help you do your job, right? I've been thinking this about you for a while now, but although you are my son's wife, there is nothing about you that makes you worth being married to. So if you'd like me to start thinking differently of you, then maybe it's time you start doing things for me too. Is this your reason for throwing out today's meal? That couldn't be my reason for it. Don't think of me as some kind of monster, okay? That is very rude of you. I went and tasted that food for your sake and my son's. I'm afraid of you feeding my son garbage. And garbage needs to be thrown out because it cannot be saved. But was there any point to throwing out the food and ingredients that I have already put together for tonight? Even if you don't want my husband eating that chili, I would have still eaten it. I don't like people wasting food like that when the prices of it all are going up. If I weren't to throw it out now, I'm sure you would have forced my son to eat it when I'm not around. And my son is far too nice a man to tell you to make him another dish when the food you've cooked is so bad. So I just saved him today from having to worry about throwing up all over the dining table. Then why not next time you and I work together to cook something up for dinner? That way you can show me how to cook a proper meal. And you can see what your son says about it in person. Why should I have to cook with you? My husband tells me that my cooking is delicious. I hear from him every time. I'm sure that he's happy with what I cook and he says thank you for it. So I want to see if what you helped me make is any better. I've noticed, though, that you always head home right before my husband gets home, right? Well, if you're so confident that my husband doesn't like what I make, then you throw it out in front of him and see what he thinks. I have a job of my own, making food for my husband back home. I do not have the time to be around your house all dang day. Just like I have been, I'll be coming over every day to check what food you're making and see if it's any good, and any day that I'm not able to come over. Do not make my son cook for you. I'll ask him to make sure that you're staying in line, because the moment you take a step out of line, I'll be on you. Tessa, are you in our house right now? Yes, I sure am. And aren't you at work right now, though? How would you know that? I'm just getting into your house. Because I just saw you on the security camera to our house. No way. Have you been watching me this whole time? I had the camera installed a while ago to watch our cat while we were at work. If you don't like being seen through it, then stop coming into our house uninvited. If you have the money to spend on a stinky cat, then you have the money to start saving for a baby, right? Well, you are always working alongside my son, so you could never have the time to have a baby. Don't tell me that you're the kind of person that doesn't want kids. I do want kids. Then why haven't you quit your job yet and stayed at home full time? I think that women are a lot more happy being at home, doing chores and raising kids rather than working a job. And I'd be happy if you left me to decide for myself when I want to have and raise kids. You saying things like that all the time will see your healthy eggs go to waste and rot away. You could have said that in a way that was a bit less horrific. Well, I'm just telling you the truth. 
the way I see it, and another thing. What the hell is this that you've made for dinner? It looks like something someone vomited out. Are you talking about the beef stew that I've made? That's it. When I got a glance of the nasty soup sitting in that bowl, I wanted to vomit. When are you going to be able to cook a decent meal for my son? I'll throw this stew out as well for you today. When you get home today, you make something that's at least half decent for my son to eat. Huh? Is my husband not home right now? Huh? What do you mean? I'm talking about your son right now. He should be at work like you, right? Today is a Tuesday, so the two of you should be getting into another week of work. No, today he has the day off because he had to go to work extra late last week. And so was given the day off as a present. What? So you're telling me he's home right now? I'm sure that you're going to get upset when you hear this. But today I was having my husband cook us our dinner. And my husband told me around lunch today that he had made beef stew for us to eat tonight. Stop making jokes about this. When I came into the house, the only thing here was your cat. Are you trying to get me all worked up by making up lies like that? I knew it. Nope. I'm telling you the truth right now. There was just a noise. It's saying that you've seen my messages, but you're not replying to me. What happened to you? Could this mean that my husband really is there with you? Um, Samantha, I have something that I'd love to talk with you about. Sure, what is it? Can you ask my son to take a look at some of the messages I've sent him for me? Look, I apologized to the both of you, didn't I? I even handed back that duplicate key to him. And I promise to never get on to you about anything I don't like ever again. So let's go back to how things were when you first entered my family and be happy together. Tessa, we told you the other day how the both of us feel right now about you, right? We said that we never want to have anything to do with you ever again. But I've learned a lot from what's happened. I think that I was just being a bit too aggressive with you about being my son's wife. A bit? No, actually, I was being very aggressive with you, wasn't I? I probably should have never thrown away your guys' cooking like that. And right now, I have a lot of regrets about all of that. Keeping our duplicate key? After we asked for it back and entering our house over and over uninvited was also pretty unacceptable of you. And after putting a lot of trust in you at first by letting you watch our cat while we've been on vacation, it's a shame to see all of that trust ruined. So what you did was not okay by any means. What's the worst to me, though, is that before handing the key back to us, you made another one of it. Well, I just thought that if anything happened at your guys' house, it would be good for me to be able to let myself in there. You entering the house without our permission is a huge problem. Hey, Samantha, I'm telling you that I really have learned from all of this and will never do any of that again. So don't you think that going as far as cutting ties with me is harsh? Making a copy of the duplicate key so that you could still come into our house. And making comments about me and my cooking before throwing it out. And the last time you threw out your son's own cooking, thinking it was mine. You would never actually have tasted any of that cooking from the start, had you? You just wanted to use the reason that I cooked the food as your reason for throwing it out. That's not what happened then. Before, you were bragging a lot about your son, right? You said that your son could do anything, and everything he cooked was always delicious. You threw away his delicious cooking. Tessa, why would you do that if it was always supposed to taste good? Well, that last time, it didn't look all that appetizing. I'm finished here. I can see that no matter what I say to you, you have an excuse made up and ready to go after what has happened between us this time. I no longer enjoy being around you. I think from now on, I'll only accept your husband as my in-law. Don't say such heartbreaking things. Both my husband and son have already torn into me about this, and they aren't choosing to listen to what I have to say anymore. My husband isn't even talking to me anymore now, and it's been weeks now where he doesn't listen or say anything to me. Well, that's all because of how messed up you were when you started to come into our house, uninvited, and criticize your son's and my cooking. I did hear one thing, though. Samantha, you're pregnant now, right? That is right. I'm pregnant right now. But that has nothing to do with you. Well, Samantha, I was so worried about you because you focused so much on your job. And that's why I was always interested in the life that you and my son were making in that house. So I made that second duplicate key so that I could get into your house and check on to you two. I just thought if you started making better food, it would benefit the both of you and any kids you have. I did all of that to give you a little advice. Advice? How is calling my food garbage and throwing it away giving me any advice? 
I think I was just struggling to say the right things to you. Even after my husband and father-in-law tore you a new one, you still haven't learned any lessons, have you? I have, and that's why I'm talking to you right now. This is all too strange, because for the last while now, all I've heard coming out of your mouth are sad excuses for why you did such horrible things. I'm sorry about that. I want to apologize to you for being so rude recently. So please try and find a way to keep my son and yourself from throwing me away. I'd love to be able to meet my grandchildren when they're born. And blaming everything on me like you guys are is too much. If you didn't want to be blamed for everything like you are now, then maybe you should have shut your mouth and been a responsible adult. We trusted you up until the point that you started entering our home without our permission. I was thinking that you and I could have become even closer then. However, you have shown us your true intentions from your actions and made it clear that you don't respect my husband and I. So I don't think I'm going to bother with you anymore. Is that so? Well, if that's the case, then I have something for you. After all of the apologies I've given to you, there has been no forgiveness. So I'm thinking that you're the messed up one in all of this. So I'm going to make it my main goal to fix that awful attitude of yours before I pass away. We aren't going to be seeing one another anymore. So, how are you going to fix my attitude? Could this mean that you made more than just one duplicate key that you're still holding on to? And what if I do have more? Do you have a problem with that? We changed our lock. Then I'll break in through your windows. You guys have a single-story house, so it's not hard for me to get in there. Stop that. We've already moved out of that house. So all you're going to be doing is getting into trouble with the law? Huh? You guys moved? Yes. We understand that you still knowing where our house was meant that there was a chance of you coming back. And we're going to be having our first baby here soon. So we'd like a place where we can focus on raising our baby with no outside distractions. Where did you guys move to? Are you brain dead, Tessa? Why would I tell you that? And don't bother your husband about it because he doesn't know the address either. And if you try to come to our house in any way, my husband is going to come to you and help you understand where the line is at. Samantha, I'm sorry. No matter what you try and say about things now, it's way too late. You even started saying that you'd go as far as breaking into our house through the window. At this point, even if you told me the best apology, I'm not going to let you near us. Well, that was just because I thought I was getting into a pickle with you guys there. That wasn't meant to be anything serious. I don't think anyone would mention something like that after already entering someone's home uninvited on multiple occasions. Samantha, I promise that I'll never do anything to hurt you guys ever again. I won't even be a bother to you both anymore. So can you find it in your heart to allow me one more chance to be your mother-in-law? That chance was me replying to your text today. I'm so sorry. I'm so freaking sorry. I know that you were always looked at so nicely by my husband and son, and that made me jealous to the point that I wanted to pick on you a little bit. So now you're just saying that all of those things you did to me and my husband were because you're a child? I get it. I was a real idiot back then when I did all of that. So please find any way besides throwing me away to deal with me. I'm going to make sure from now on to change my heart and become the best mother-in-law ever. No matter what you say to me, you are not going to change the idea that you cemented in my mind of you. I'm throwing out the trash here. You had your last chance a second ago to tell me that all of this was because you're a child. But instead, you wasted my time with all your crappy excuses. Well, your time is up now, and I need to make sure that my family never has to deal with you in the future. From that day on, silence was my only companion where Tessa's calls used to be. I believe my message is clear. My decision is final, and no amount of flimsy excuses will sway me. So, I cut her off. The very idea that someone would dare to copy a key to invade someone else's sanctuary was horrifying, and her audacity in criticizing me left me reeling. However, when confronted by both of her husbands, who expressed disdain for her actions, she began to crumble from her once-respected role as mother-in-law, fear evident in her eyes. I had hoped for harmony, a bond I had never known, but now I had that burden lifted. 
She claimed to see a worthy wife in me, a reason to bless our union, but her eyes never reflected those words. If she had chosen honesty over deception, we could have avoided this abyss. Now, supported by my husband and his father, I hold fast to my resolve, assured that I need not cater to anyone's interests but my own. Tessa, now a shadow, moved in silence, her world reduced to chores and corners. Her husband, a distant person, did not listen to her pleas, did not comfort her to tears. At their age, perhaps it was merciful to let her be, although I was surprised that he remained after her betrayal. For now, she must live in silence, her family duties being her only solace. It's been months since we changed addresses, and as I begin maternity leave, I'm enjoying the calm before the storm of motherhood. Tessa won't enjoy the joy of being hugged by her grandson, but I will accept any olive branch offered by her husband. Right now, my focus is on the life I carry, the future I nurture. But time can soften the hardest of hearts, and perhaps Tessa will find her way back to us. For now, let's put such musings aside. My world narrowed to my husband, my unborn child, and gratitude for those who guided me here. As I journey toward motherhood, I will appreciate every helping hand committed to being true to myself and those who I love.